Hi everyone, this is a quick video on uh, techniques for reading inscriptions, um, particularly and how to use a raking light to uh, read an inscription, um, often in dim uh, lighting conditions such as you might find uh, in a museum or uh, inside uh, perhaps some kind of in situ uh, archaeological site. So um, I just wanted to show a couple of practical examples in this video so you get an idea of the kind of things you can do with a raking light, by which I mean um, a light that is at a steep angle to the surface that you're looking at. Um, these pictures are from uh, a workshop that I did in uh, Exeter Cathedral a few years ago. And you can see uh, here is one of the inscriptions we were looking at. Um, as you can see, it's in the floor, so we can't move it to get it in a better lighting condition. Um, it's in quite a, a dim area of the cathedral uh, in one of the side aisles. And you can see on uh, on the floor there, some of my kind of kit uh, for, um, uh, for the workshop. So it was just a pen and paper and a tape measure, but also a little kind of LED torch. Um, and this is what I use a lot of the time um, it's just a, a little torch rather than having one big bulb. It has some LEDs, so it has a kind of more even beam. Um, but it's, you know, very cheap and simple. You don't need any uh, complicated equipment for this. Um, even a, a phone torch will do the job in some circumstances as well. Um, but the important thing is that you can have a beam of light that you can get at an angle. So you can see in this photo here that the um, uh, inscription is kind of visible. We can tell there is an inscription, but because of the lighting conditions, it's really hard to make out any of the lettering. So let's apply a raking light to that. Um, now you can see if we apply a light, uh, you know, almost completely vertically on the surface, some of the letters immediately kind of jump out. So you can see a little bit more clearly, perhaps um, the third and fourth lines. You can see um, you can probably see it says who died, um, died spelled D-Y-E-D. -E um, now that's still very worn and there are parts of the letters that are worn away, um, but what is there becomes um, easier to make out and more kind of contrasted. Um, so that's the purpose of a raking light uh, is to show you um, the, um, uh, the shapes of the letters that still remain in a bit more detail. As you can see from this, we can combine that with photography, right? So photography can be used to um, to capture some of that um, uh, impression that we get from raking light. It's not uh, quite the same as doing it in person because in person you can also move the light source and that makes a really big difference. I'll see if I can show you some examples of that as well. So this is a different inscription. Um, this is what it looks like if we're shining the light Pretty much straight at it. So you can see, um, you can probably read this one kind of okay, or at least the parts that are kind of um, most visible. Um, it's been quite worn away by being walked on on the floor, but you can see the last word or two of each um, each line. So you can see body, and then you can see uh, something that you might not be sure about, but then the word late, and then in the third line there, you can just about see of his, uh, the O and the F of, of are probably not very clear, but you can maybe just about make that out. Okay, so that's if we're shining a light directly on it. So let's now use a raking light. If we shine a light from the left hand side, I think there's things that immediately stand out in a bit more detail. Um, I think the F of of is a, is a lot more obvious now. Um, as you can see, this surface um, has quite a few kind of indentations and marks on it, not all of which are deliberate. And one thing that raking light can really help with is to show you the depth of some of the indentations. So you can start to see that like some of the marks on the right hand side after the word his, for example, are um, are just damaged the stone. They're not intentional. Whereas you can see um, things that might have just looked like damage are actually part of the letter F or whatever. Um, you can see uh, stuff that, you know, so in the uh, abbreviation, I think it's an abbreviation of the word Esquire, um, the, the very small R to the above, above the right of the Q, um, that might have just looked like damage, but with a raking light, it's much more clear that that's an intentional letter. And as I said, the other thing to consider is like, how are you gonna move the light around? When you're using a raking light, 
don't just put it in one position, move it around um, because you're going to reveal different things. So now by uh, shining it downwards, we can see different aspects of you know, the words late and here's, but we can also see um, the word body at the top a lot clearer as well. Um, so different angles are going to just get you different things and different parts of different letters. Um, if you're photographing an inscription, uh, it's really great to be able to um, photograph it with the use of different angles of light and different light sources, if at all possible. Um, if you are uh, drawing or copying, copying the inscription, it's potentially going to get you different details as well. So the use of raking light really um, helpful for reading an inscription and recording it, um, particularly in dim lighting conditions, but in really any lighting conditions where you think um, an angled light might be able to get you a bit more of the detail. So particularly for use when things are a bit worn or a bit damaged, um, but really applicable to most situations, um, you'll often get a little bit of detail that you wouldn't see otherwise.